Hola, hola, my name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of a new skincare brand launch, and today we're talking about Prequel, skincare brand of fellow social media science educator and dermatologist, Dr. Samantha Ellis, lover content. I actually got to go to the brand launch brunch when I was in LA. My husband and I have been trying the products for a minute now, but today's video is gonna be a full brand review in order of my favorite product in the line to least favorite, but I don't hate any product in the line specifically. But just for some preface, I actually got samples of the product, I believe as early as May or April sometime around then. So my husband and I have been trying out a few of the core products for a minute. And since then, obviously the brand has launched. We did go to the brand launch in LA, the brunch. And the product has now done a few more rounds of launches. So I think now we're standing at five or six launches. Full disclosure, I am good friends online with Dr. Samantha Ellis. Also, I did receive the products in PR, but I will be reviewing the products more objectively in terms of their formulation, the overall sensory experience of it based off like the brand ethos itself. So depending on what part of the video you want to get to, you can have timestamps down below, fast forward to it part of the video you want to watch. So all that being said, let's get into the prequel products. If you're not aware, again, Dr. Sam Ellis is the founder of Prequel. Prequel is the center brand. And Dr. Sam Ellis is a doctor. She's a dermatologist. And so looking at the information about the brand and why it launched, it's really developed from her perspective as a practicing dermatologist. If you don't follow her, she like is recording in her office between patients all the time. Like she actively practices as a derm. The focus of Prequel, they exist to restore the skin barrier and deliver healthy skin from head to toe with our advanced elegant formulations made with active ingredients. And that kind of captures everything that the brand's about. Head to toe, really supporting skin barrier and elegant formulations. So really they try to keep it similar to products that she uses or recommends while she practices while elevating them with unique sensorial and tactile experiences. And that goes back to what Chrissy, the head of R&D for Prequel in the center, it's just like her mind is crazy with what she thinks of and the products that she creates as a result of that. And from Dr. Sam herself, the quote is, I have always felt there was a greater need for more advanced, elegant formulations that are accessible to all. And that's why I created Prequel. Also, if you didn't know, so the advisory chemists for Prequel are three of my like chemist social media friends. You have Javon Ford, you have Jane Sweet, and then my actual chemist best friend, Esther Olu. And so seeing their faces on the website, it's like, it makes me happy. But yeah, they're advisory chemists to prequel. What that means, I don't exactly know, but um, I think they consult on some of the formulations, give feedback and whatnot. So let's talk about the products. I'll be talking about the starting with my favorite of the entire line. And that is, let me get the official packaging here. This is the Skin Utility Ointment Multi-Purpose Skin Protectant. And I'm still burning through the actual sample to show you guys. So back when we first got the samples, again, April, May, we got these little like testers from the lab and a good handful of content creators got these. And so again, I've been using these for ages now. This is the official packaging. And so kind of reading the marketing behind this. So multi-purpose midway ointment that moisturizes and helps restore skin barrier while protecting dry, chapped, cracked, and irritated skin. Has 45% petrolatum, our shielding polymer, and alpha bisabolol. So it's going to help to treat compromised skin and provide a comfortable occlusive layer. The reason I love this is it's an occlusive. It's basically basically an occlusive balm, but it's more elegant than Vaseline, more elegant than Aquifer for Aquifer, and then the CeraVe Healing Ointment. And those are all like viral, obviously, products. Vaseline's OG, CeraVe Healing Ointment. It's a very viral social media product. This to me is more lightweight than that, but gives all the benefits. It's a very elegant occlusive balm, basically. It's called it, it's called an ointment, but for me, it's like a balm texture. In terms of the ingredients of this that I think are really interesting, so obviously 45% petrolatum, but this also has a specific ingredient I'll have here on screen. And what it is, it's a essentially a biodegradable polymer that helps to form a film on the skin. Looking at the one manufacturer I could find of it, they advertise it as more of like a protectant from external pollutants, pollutants, which is not a bad thing, but it more so I think of it as that as an occlusive film former. And then it also has a different complex in it. I believe it's Sim Repair. It's what the complex is called, which the manufacturer sells it as a synergistic blend of three key components of the barrier lipid of the stratum corneum combined with soothing benefits of Bisabolol. So again, helping to support the barrier as it heals itself. This is amazing. I love to either use this underneath a really powerful retinoid. I love to use this, especially when my eye area where it gets really, really irritated. I love this as a lip balm. It's basically, it's like slugging. It's a much more elegant option for slugging. Or, I mean, I actually really like to use, I know people don't recommend it, but what I'll do is on a clean face, nothing on it, I'll just put down my retinoid and then I'll put this on top. And I know people say like, don't do that. It's gonna essentially intensify the effects of the retinoid, but I want that. But it's so lightweight. It doesn't feel like you're putting a very rich, it's not like, it's not straight petrolatum on the face. Again, very elegant. I think my next favorite product in the line would have to be 
the Glenzer. And just for reference, look at how massive this is. And the price of this is, this is only $18, $18. And that's another big thing for prequel is the products are massive for like a really affordable price. So yeah, this is the Glenzer, $18. It's called Glenzer because it's a cleanser that has glycerin in it. It's like the primary ingredient. Looking at the marketing for this, it's a non-stripping glycerin cleanser for the face and body formulated with 50% glycerin, inulin, and a unique aquaporin stimulating active to boost skin suppleness. It also has arginine or arginine, oat extract and aloe to soothe and comfort. So the big thing about this is high percentage of glycerin. It has a very gel texture to this. If you've used the Ordinary's new like gel foaming cleanser, very similar to that. If you've used Naturium's multi-oil body wash, kind of similar to that. I say kind of because they're high in glycerin, but the rest of the formulation is not the same. This uses really gentle surfactants as well. You have cocomethylbetaine, you have disodium, cocoa amphodiacetate. Those are going to gently cleanse the skin, but effectively. But I will say uh, the best way for me to use this is I put product in my hand, put some water in my hand, and I work up the product like that first before I apply it to my face. I really have to get the product going first. Another thing to point out is that the reason I really like this is the fact that you rinse it off, your face feels supple, it feels conditioned. And an element to that is that it does feature something called polyquaternium 10, which is cationic. And cationic means as positive charge. Your skin has a negative charge. Those two things combine. You see polyquats a lot in conditioning products like hair conditioners. But having that on the skin, it helps to literally condition the skin so it feels soft. It helps to have this layer on the skin that helps to, along with the humectants in this, helps your skin just to feel very, very hydrated afterwards. It's not feeling dry, it's not feeling tight. And that's my favorite part about this. It's a very nourishing cleanser, even though it is a foaming cleanser. And again, you also do have the soothing ingredients in this as they do market. But another thing is that they have, so they, in the marketing for this, they on the website, they like to feature like some of the technologies behind the products. So with this, they have an oligosaccharide inulin. Basically, it's an encapsulated inulin. An inulin, on top of being an ingredient that helps to support the microbiome of the skin, it just helps to, again, give you that nice condition feel. It helps to soothe the skin and support skin moisturization. So a lot of the ingredients in here help to do so, but the delivery system of this helps to really give you those benefits so that they last longer. But the encapsulation of the liposome with it helps to essentially prolong the effectiveness of that, helps to give you a longer benefit from that ingredient. I will still double cleanse with this. I'll either use this two rounds or oil cleanse before this. This does not take off makeup like that, but it's a really nice product. And especially with how often I have to wash my face or this summer, which is really harsh on my skin. This is a cleanser I like to use a lot. And again, you get a big ass bottle of this. It's for face and body. Really nice, elegant, cool user experience. And I think that's what I like the most. Also really fun packaging. I don't know, can you see yourself in this? Next favorite product is their Urea Advanced Relief 10% Urea Moisturizing Milk. Keyword in that is milk. To me, this is a lotion, but it has a very lightweight texture to it. It's not like a cream. And I find with Urea products, especially a higher percentage like that, you tend to find them, they're more lotion to richer cream texture. They're not light on the skin. And I've always talked about and complained about on here that I don't like my moisturizers to feel heavy on me because then I put them on, especially after a shower, I get all sweaty, my blankets stick to me. It's not a fun sensory experience. But with this, it's a nice lightweight texture and marketing on this, restoring face and body urea lotion that reestablishes optimal levels of hydration, 10% pure urea, it helps to soothe dry, rough, itchy and flaky skin. Also has shea butter, glycerin and niacinamide. And you have a lot of things to help to make this feel very light, but also nourishing on the skin skin, lightweight emollients, some really nice nourishing fatty acids in this. So you have the ingredients to help nourish the skin, help to support the moisture barrier, but it's not going to be a heavy, rich cream. So on the body, I do love this, especially for the feet. Urea for the feet is everything. Urea, on top of being a really good humectant, is mildly to decently keratolytic, meaning that it helps with the shedding of dead skin. It's a mild exfoliant, basically. So with the benefit of having the keratolytic and the moisturizing benefits, the hydrating benefits, it's a really good option for feet. If you got dry, scaly feet, rough feet, put some on your heels wherever you get that roughness after you shower and then put a sock on and then like give it a week or two your feet will feel very soft but yeah i like the fact that it's nourishing it does a lot to support skin moisturization but it's very lightweight also what's interesting to point out is the fact that this is the only product i believe in the entire line that has niacinamide in it for those of you who are weary or critical of the ingredient and the next product and i do like this product a lot it's just i like so many of them this is the barrier therapy skin protectant cream this has one percent colloidal o and this is really a skin protectant slash body cream. Also, look at how massive this tube is. That's 
That's what kills me about these products. So again, this is a skin protectant, which allows them to have that 1% colloidal O as a drug fact. And they really tout this and market this as more of alleviating irritation due to extreme dryness, AKA maybe as a result of eczema flare-ups. And then on top of the oat, you have a multi ceramide blend, allantoin, adenosine. So a lot of things to really soothe the skin, help to support the skin barrier. And this is a really nice cream. This is more of a cream cream as opposed to the urea lotion. And you have a lot of ceramides in this, again, the ceramide complex, along with fatty acids and cholesterol. So you have a lot of ingredients that help to support the skin moisture barrier. You have more lightweight occlusives in this, I will say. So comparing it to the ointment, this is, again, it's 45% petrolatum. This is an occlusive that's going to really sit on the skin, forming that occlusive barrier. This is a cream. It's a richer cream, but it's not going to feel super heavy, super heavy occlusive on the skin. It's still going to give you the moisturization. It's going to give you the barrier support, but in a lighter texture still. But great for soothing, especially again, if you have extreme dryness associated with eczema or irritation associated with that dryness. The way I've been using this the most, because I got a tester for this a few months back. So when I do my skincare routine, I layer actives. And there's two or three days out of the week where I'll just hammer it and I'll just do sulfur. I'll do an exfoliant. So AHA and BHA. And I'll do my retinoid. And so by day three and four of the week my skin's dry this i'll layer a uh, humectant under this and then just this on top and i'm good and again with all the products it's for face and body on my face i find this is a richer cream texture but i love a colloidal oat product i talk about it on my content all the time i love the soothing i get from that and everything else in here again ceramides cholesterol fatty acids and a cream texture and it doesn't feel very lotiony it's a cream that dries down and doesn't feel greasy on the skin it doesn't feel heavy emollients on the skin therefore i like that sensory especially when i'm trying to go to sleep my pillow doesn't it'll sticky on me you know also something i didn't mention for the products is the fact that all of these are alcohol free all of these are fragrance free they are very to the point in terms of user experience with the optimization around the sen sensory of the feel of the products the elegance of the products themselves and then the last product to talk about i don't hate this product it's just for me hypochlorous acid products are not my tea necessarily but i mean spoiler alert this is their hypochlorous acid spray this is their universal skin solution dermal spray featuring 0 0.02 hypochlorous acid the tea is around that is i don't have a lot of experience around a formulating hypochlorous acid products. Therefore, in terms of speaking to them or using them, I've never really used them that much either. For the last few months, I have incorporated, and it, before I got this one, I only got this one, I think in the last month, the Tower 28, their spray, the SOS spray. I have used that. And then I've incorporated this into my routine in the last month since I've gotten it. What I will say, my skin has been clearer. But that being said, there's a lot of other variables around that. I'm not going to contribute them entirely to the hypochlorous acid product. More about that in a second though, getting to the marketing of this, looking into this because again i don't have a lot of a background in hypochlorous acid products with sam she uses this a lot in her practice she uses this a lot for her patients and there's a lot of benefits she touts with the use of a hypochlorous acid spray i'll have them all here on screen but with the marketing behind this the spray is a super oxidized solution formulated with a pure stabilized hypochlorous acid electrolyzed water and soothing mineral concentrate that purifies calms and alleviates reactive sensitive sensitized and or compromised skin and looking into hypochlorous acid there's a few ways to make it the most common way and the most commercially used way is you take salt water and you electrolyze the solution and through that you get the compounds. By technicality, a hypochlorous acid product is very diluted chlorine bleach, but it's not recommended to make it that way because there's a few dangers around that. And then I forgot the third way, but I'll have a link below. Uh, another chemist, cosmetic chemist, her name is Stephen Coe, did a, did a post kind of breaking down hypochlorous acid and a lot of the marketing we see from brands behind it. And he breaks down what the actual science and chemistry behind hypochlorous acid is and then a few other things worth noting about the concept and commercial use like this and what i will say is when it comes to hypochlorous acid products it's interesting to note what they do how they work and then how they'll play with other products as a result of that if you want the full benefits of hypochlorous acid product especially because the whole point again it's a super oxidized solution you can't use it with a lot of ingredients necessarily not in an irritation way just in a compatibility sense and so the way i've used it is i I will after a shower spray it on my face and then I'll let that dry down like entirely. I rarely ever let my skincare dry down like that. I really just slap it on, really take advantage of the hydration and everything. But for this, I let it dry down because I don't want anything reacting with a solution necessarily. And there's a lot of caveats in terms of, again, to that point, what you can mix in a solution. So, and also the pH of the solution as well. So with that, I'm just kind of like, mm, I don't I don't know a lot about this product to really speak to it, to recommend it, to say if I think it works well for me or not. Again, I have felt my skin is 
little bit more clear, but I also have incorporated a lot of different exfoliants and a lot of different other ingredients and products in my routine that are responsible for that as well, potentially. So I only have this at the end of my list because I don't, I don't know if it's a product for me. But again, if you go on the website, Dr. Sam uses this a lot, recommends it for a lot of things. There are studies showcasing a lot of benefits that these solutions can be used for. But generally, I like to speak to products in terms of a professional perspective, whether that's on things I've read and studied, things I actively have worked on, or things I just know. And this is one of those grayer areas for me. I hope that makes sense to you guys. But with that, that is a full prequel brand review. Let me know down below in the comment section, have you tried prequel? What are your favorite products from the brand? And also, what do you wanna see from the brand? I have my list of things, but it's also interesting when you have a derm developing products based on what she practices with and what she uses for patients and what she recommends for patients. And me as a consumer, thinking of things that I like and what I want. It's like those two worlds, it's very interesting to see them collide. But love what Sam's done with the line so far. Again, I am biased in the regard that I know the developer of the products, I know the founder of the brand. I have a relationship with the brand as well. Therefore, I've never done an ad with Prequel. I haven't done one yet, but full disclosure. But I'm so really excited about it because I love a content creator founded brand and I love cool ingredient technology. But that being said, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and beauty related content on my channel. Give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.